Starbeams Audio. Thank you for listening to the Starburns Audio Podcast Network. We have so many great comedy shows to add to your playlist. Just last week on Starburns Audio, on Ghosted by Roz Dresfelez, Busy Phillips talks about a creepy paranormal encounter she had in Oxford, England, and listens to ghost voices captured by ghost hunters. On Small Doses, Amanda Seals talks to her insecure co-star, writer, actress, and producer Issa Rae about the side effects of being a boss. And introducing That Black Ass Show, a new podcast with Dulce Sloan. Check out a teaser episode now featuring comedians Roy Wood Jr., Thea Vidal, Derek Gaines, and Willie Hunter, with full episodes available starting Wednesday, April 22nd. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Search Starburns Audio on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any podcast platform for a full list of our shows, featuring hosts like Tim Heidecker, Open Mike Eagle, and Adam Conover. Don't forget to follow us on IG and Twitter at Starburns Audio. Enjoy the show. And remember, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep laughing. Bob Saget's here for you. That's right, that's me. And I'm talking in third person, which means I need to see my shrink, but he's not returning my calls. But I've got a podcast that's out now that I'm really excited about, and uh, I know I'm the last person to do it. No, I'm the first comedian who's ever done a podcast. The podcast is called Bob Saget's Here For You, and I'm doing it because even the neighbor kid has one. There's a pony down the street that has one, a gopher. And so I, I'm starting one. You wanna subscribe now to the, where you get your downloads, and I will be there. But it will have occasional guests, uh, guests that will be meaningful to me and I think, I hope to you. And um, it'll just uh, be me talking to you guys and I'll be on the phone sometimes just talking to my agent, complaining about things. But mostly it's to bring you entertainment and to spend some time with you and be real. Bob Saget's here for you and I'll be there. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Squabro Country, the virus edition, aka the Panty Pots. AKA Two Guys One Couch. AKA Two Wolverines One Quarantine. AKA Two Sklars No Bars. AKA Two Jews No Harmon Killers. AKA Two Bros No Schmoes. AKA No Beards Two Weirds. All right, I'm down with that. Yeah, we're down. Uh, guys, thank you for listening to this show. Thank you for all your support. I love all the messages we get on Instagram when we post up a clip. Uh, I love telling personal stories. By the way, that story, uh, Stanley Myron Handelman's story, his son. Are you sure that's his son? I, it is his son. I did the research. I went through his son, Dan Myron Handelman, uh, National Lampoon commented on it. And Dan Myron Handelman then said, I, I can't believe the Squad Brothers are talking about my dad on in a bit. Unbelievable. Unbelievable the way this world connects us. We need to stay connected. That's what we try and do with this show is give you a half hour of your day to just not think about difficult things, make fun of people, and enjoy just basically us just being silly. And this is what we like to do. We've really enjoyed getting in the groove of doing this thing for you, right? Yeah, and I think that, you know, I think about my life mm -hmm. in this pandemic. I think about how I feel when I can't go to sleep at night. Yeah. Last night, my son woke me up at one in the morning because mm -hmm. uh, you ever just get tired of parenting and you're yeah. like, I'm out. You're yeah. like Scotty Pippen. You're yeah. like, don't put me in. Don't, be, don't put me in. Did you have a migraine? Did you have a migraine? I had a migraine. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I can't operate right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's 1030. My son, sleep is nowhere in his near future. I'm like, Not bro, I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. I'm done. I yeah. can't. I, I've parented. You put yourself to bed. I put yourself to bed. I've parented. I've given my full parenting like allotment for the day. It's like trying to kill a major penalty, a 10 minute penalty. Right. Five on three. Five you on three hockey it. penalty. And so I'm like, I'm out. I'm out. So I, I, I lay down and at one fifteen in the morning, he wakes me up mm -hmm. and he's like, I can't sleep. And I'm like, did you sleep at all? Like in my mind, I'm like, he hasn't slept at all. Nope. He hasn't slept. So now I'm turning into a lesson about how he's on electronics too much. Yeah. But I come back to bed and I can't sleep. Right, of course. Because now I'm 100% awake. Of course you can't sleep. And I sat down and I listened to a podcast. There you go. And that 
calmed me to a point where, because my mind started racing. I started going through all the pandemic That's things, right. That's all right. the issues that keep us up. And now we have more. It, right. There's more fuel on that fire. But I, a podcast is what brought me down and there brought me back down to earth. And we hope that's what we're doing with this thing for you. So we start out today with a little, a quick fun story. Listen, I get it. Some people don't have it in them to go to work these days. I, I get it. We feel that way too. There are moments where I'm like, I can't do it. I just like Randy, you said, you look Jen. like right now you work at both a Trader Joe's and a record store. And if Trader Joe's started selling records, you'd be in that section, judging people's choices. I'm a roadie for uh, the Margaritaville guy, Jimmy Buffett. All right. The Margaritaville guy? That's what I'm going to call him. Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy Buffett. Remember <laughs> This was not nice, but remember when he fell off the stage? Did you ever see him uh, fall off yeah. the stage? Well, I don't live long. <laughs> and they just fell off the tip top. He literally fell off the stage. I know. I know. I know. All right. Uh, there are ways to call in sick to work, and then there's what this guy did. Uh, I would file this under what this guy did as not great. Palm Beach County Sheriff's deputies, of course. Florida. Arrested 36-year-old Richard Hamilton in charge with making a false threat. Richard, Richard I thought Hamilton. Richard Hamilton was 76 years old, like the old leathery guy who no, was that's the Kentucky someone Fried else Chicken. Hamilton. That's someone else Hamilton. I Robert thought, Hamilton. No. no, that's Richard Hamilton. Are you sure? I think that's Richard Hamilton. Who is the guy who wore the face mask? Who went to UConn and then yeah, he actually that's played Rip for the Pistons? That's Richard Hamilton. That's Richard Hamilton. That's Richard Hamilton. There's a different Pistons shooting another, guard with the face. Yeah. Because I bet Richard Hamilton is probably from the Pistons. I yeah. bet he's probably around 36 years old right no. now. No. 45? Are you joking? Richard Hamilton is- I'm going to find out right He's now. at least 40 sec, 46 years old. I'm finding he's four, or 43. He's like six or seven years out of the league. Okay, Rip Hamilton was in those Pistons team. Was on the Piston teams. Look at look at look at how old he is. How old is he? When was he born? Look to the right. It says his age right down there. Uh, it says that he is forty two. I was right. Not that much older okay. than what I said. Uh, okay, but still I still like six years younger than us. And he feels whatever, like close it. to this guy. Okay, all right, different guy. Thirty six year old dumb Richard Hamilton from Florida Acqu decided to not go, go to work. That's right. According to the arrest reports, deputies investigating the call determined that Hamilton was the caller who called in a bomb threat. Oh, come on. And continued, they continued their investigation at Jeez. 1100 Wellington Trace and evacuated 20 people from the building. Why were those people still at work? Yeah, seriously. Like, like you shouldn't maybe be evacuating. Maybe he's doing them a favor with Look, this bomb threat. You, you should not, no one should be at work. Apparently. And no one should be threatening bomb. Let, let's, if you're going to drop bombs, let it be in the toilet, all right? right? Apparently, someone had called in a bomb threat, a bomb threat. And the building had to be evacuated. Deputies saw they said they found a vendor in the area. He told them Hamilton was one of his employees. Hamilton told deputies he'd lost his phone, according to the rest report. Oh, so you the know old, what that is? Oh, I know I, look, I phone. don't know where my phone was. I mean, yes. So I'm not denying that, that a bomb threat that was came called from in from, this from my phone, number. But it was not my phone. I mean, it prob my phone got what, hacked. What, what voice was it? My phone, he's putting on a different voice. My phone got he's trying to do a British accent. What? What phone is this? I'm not. What phone is this? It's pretty weird, right? It's weird, right? It's weird, isn't it? What phone? That I would what be the phone one. is this? Not quite sure why. It so would he be lost me. his phone. Someone right? who wasn't me picked it up. Knew my lock screen code. This is probably what this, this is. This, this, this is had process. to know his lock screen code. Right, right. Called in a bomb threat. Then didn't steal the phone, just left, left it, it for me to in see in an area where I could then go back and find, find it. it. That's that exactly totally checks out that story. Sure as hell, probably someone sounded like me yeah. or tried to do my. Guys trying to imitate me and ruin my life with this because they've studied my voice so well. This was a clearly an inside job. Yeah, this is this is the kind of thing where someone who there are a lot of it, nothing from all of this stuff. What you don't understand is there there are a lot of incredible mimics in this area. This is Mimic Central here. A Mimic took my phone. You the best Mimic. A mimic, mimic took my phone and called it a bomb threat as me just to get me in trouble. And then I found my phone. Yours is a hairstyle I'd like to mimic. Pam, Pam mimic. mimic. So I thought nothing happened with my phone while it was lost. That's what I thought. I thought nothing happened to it, but apparently all this stuff went down. So you can imagine my surprise. This is like that movie, when I saw Secret Life guys, of Pets, but it's Secret guys, Life of Phones. That's right. After search, what happens to our phones when we put them when down? When we put them down, who knows? After searching the area of Hamilton's car, 
re slash house. Uh Deputies say uh, the suspect admitted to them that there was no bomb and he made the call because he was having a bad day and wanted to get out of work. Okay. So now it's just one tiny twist of the arm. He's like, all right, I made the call. But that's not the way I, to get out of work I'm in these a days. Bad, he said, I'm having a bad day. Is that what he said? Uh, so he probably said, look, I lost my phone and I don't know what happened to it. And maybe someone called him and bombed that. They're like, can we search your car? And he's like, okay, I did it. There is no bomb. There is no bomb. Like he turned so he fast. He flipped over so fast. State's witness. You say, I think I had a fever. I started to get some chills. This is what you start to say to them. Right. I'm not in my right mind. I may have done this, but it might have been in a fever dream. No one's going to want to be around you at that Mm -mm. point. Mm -mm. I'm not saying blame it on COVID. I'm just saying you could go that route and maybe make it less bad for you than what you did. you can't make it less bad. You Just saying you're being extra careful. You don't even possibly get anyone at work sick. But bomb threat throws people into such a day. You got to take that seriously. You cannot look. This if is, you said, I think I may have symptoms and I want to stay home because I don't want to infect anyone at work, who's going to get mad at you? How can anyone get upset? Who can get mad at you if you just say that? Even if you're lying because you don't but want to go to work. everyone I know is begging to go to work. How yeah. bad is this guy's work situation that people are like, well, if he's still working, it's not good. I guess. Well, then he should call him up and say like, look, I'm calling the Better Business Bureau on this place. Right. We're bomb, not allowed to be here. Bomb threat, though. As soon as the threat is extinguished, you go back to work. This is like... It's a bad plan. When you don't know how to fix a situation, but you try anyway. That's right. You, We have to, as people, acknowledge. When Randy and I were 18 years old, it was a summer, mm-hmm. on our way to the University of Michigan, summer between high school and college, we worked at gas stations, two separate gas stations. Because they wouldn't let us work at the same one because I guess they thought that blood was thicker than gas. Like if I saw you stealing gas, I wouldn't tell people that you were stealing gas. And the truth is I probably wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't. I spent the whole summer, and we've talked about this on on another podcast, there was Sprite. Under the cap game. Sprite played a contest, an under the cap game. Like if idiots, they didn't realize that Sprite, Sprite is, is a clear. clear drink. You can hold it up like this and see if you so want. So I would just go look under all the And caps. if you won, you would win a free soda. A free Sprite. So I'm like, who am I hurting? Nobody. I'm just winning. I'm hurting all the people who are coming to the gas station hoping they're going to win a free Sprite. But you know what? I'm stuck at this gas station. Well, Randy, one time there was a small grease fire on, uh, in, on a <sighs> First motor. of all, it was... It was Summertime in St. Louis, so it's 110 degrees. We're wearing pants. I'm sweating bullets. There was a, this guy, uh, it came up in like a 1984 Toyota, like, Supra. Okay, Tercel or Supra. It was like a car they don't make anymore. And you open up the thing, and he... He's like, up the hood. well, first of all, he ordered, it's a packed, I mean, it's like rush hour. There's all these people there. It's a full service gas station. People, and you're the one outside, the I'm only the one, one doing, going, doing all the cars. Right. The guy who's supposed to be working with me, Booger, that was his name, inside. So I'm, he's letting me take the whole rush, which sucks. There's a whole lines of cars everywhere. I'm trying to get everybody. This guy asked for $5 worth of gas. Super unleaded? Super or? unleaded for super his unleaded. dumb car. $5 and super. And to check his oil and add some stuff to his oil. So I'm trying to do this. I've got other cars going. I go put turn the gas on. I run over and I don't even grab a funnel. I just grab the oil and I pour a thing of oil in. You're supposed to have a paper funnel so that none gets on anything else. It's hot. All of a sudden, a little bit maybe spilled on the valve cover gasket. All of a sudden, it starts smoking. Jeez. And I'm looking over this. I'm looking over this. It's smoking. And then all of a sudden, I see a flame shoot out. Now, we are right next to 15,000 gallons of gasoline. A flame shoots out. So this is dummy me because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I start blowing on it. That's, That's So this sp- is when you don't know a solution. You do what you think is right. What you think is right is always the exact wrong thing to do. I blow on it and it spreads the oil around. So it's I basically spread the fire out. Jesus Christ. It's now on fire. Did people, you put water on it? I poured water on it, which spread it even further. The dumbest thing you can possibly do to people, increase fire. And at this time that there's a fire on this guy's car, he's out, people are out of their cars and they want to run away. Yeah. Because the whole thing could, could blow. blow sky high. I hear his gas click, which means I didn't <laughs> stop it at $5. I, it filled went, up the, filled whole, up the thing. whole thing. So it was probably like $20 <laughs> worth of gas. 
<laughs> so I don't know what to do. Booger sees the fire. He comes flying out of the garage. Which part. he should have been out in the first place. He comes flying out of the garage with a fire extinguisher. With a fire extinguisher blows and, and extinguishes the fire, putting a huge cloud of extinguisher stuff that covers up everything. Which just by the fact of, of you calling it extinguisher stuff, stuff. Tells you I don't know what it is. Even after working for a whole I don't know. Extinguent. He puts it on there, and all of a sudden, huge plume of extinguisher plume of smoke. extinguisher smoke and and fallout and all that stuff, and it's a huge cloud. No one can see anything. People are coughing. It goes down. He has put the fire out. Everyone is standing, and they're all looking around and looking at me, and I'm looking at this guy, and I just turned to everybody. And I was like, "Who's next?" <laughs> there you go. So that story proves that when you think. You know the solution, but deep down you have no idea what the solution is. Don't do the thing that you think you should do because it is the wrong thing. It's probably going to be the wrong thing. Think about it before you actually act. So this dummy didn't want to go to work. Yeah. Called in a bomb threat. Let me call in a bomb threat. That's an easy thing. No one's going to get hurt. I don't actually have a bomb. No. We're all good here, right? What What? What could, what could possibly go wrong? go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? I'm not yeah. threatening anyone's life. You are. You are actually threatening someone's life by doing something like this. Hamilton was released on bond on, on Friday, to which he replied, this is the bomb, and then they put him back in for another hour. I'm just kidding. Jesus. He should be sentenced to 30 more days if he makes a bad joke like that. But that would have been classic Richard, not rip, not leathery Richard Hamilton action of something, thinking he's doing something, but he's not doing it. All right, that's our first story. We're going to take a little break. We have a great a uh, voicemail from our friends at Mega. That is such a good podcast. If if you, you, so this is our podcast recommendation for you. Every day we try to throw you a good one to listen to. This is one of the best improvised uh, podcasts out there. These are some of the best improvisers, Second City alums. These are the guys who do improvised Shakespeare. It's top, top tier improvisers doing an unbelievable podcast. About a mega church. Set in a mega church. It is hilarious. If you're not listening to it, get on it right now. It's called Mega. And they left us a voicemail. Then we'll uh, go to break and we'll see you on the other side. Hi, Sklar Bros. Hey, blessings, fellas. We sure hope you're staying safe and staying well and keeping hope alive. You know God has a plan, and the cure for this pesky virus is out there somewhere. You know, Hallie, it might even be uh, with what the president said this week. Yeah, so to help you take his advice to heart, we had our friends, the Watkins family. They're awesome singers and musicians. They put the president's exact words to some worship music for our new episode this weekend. Here's a little taste. I see the disinfectant Where it knocks it out in a minute One minute And is there a way we can do something like that By injecting inside Or almost a cleaning Because you see it gets in the lungs and it does a tremendous number on the lungs So it would be interesting So it would be interesting So it would be interesting To check that now, we don't actually recommend drinking disinfectant, but we do recommend washing your hands in the blood of Jesus. For 20 seconds. That's right. It's going to keep your heart really clean. We got a new episode this Sunday. God bless. With a tremendous... Hey, I'm Andy. If you don't know me, it's probably because I'm not famous. But I did start a men's grooming company called Harry's. The idea for Harry's came out of a frustrating experience I had buying razor blades. Most brands were overpriced, overdesigned, and out of touch. At Harry's, our approach is simple. Here's our secret. We make sharp, durable blades and sell them at honest prices for as low as $2 each. We care about quality so much that we do some crazy things, like buy a world-class German blade factory. Obsessing over every detail means we're confident in offering a 100% quality guarantee. Millions of guys have already made the switch to Harry's, so thank you if you're one of them. And if you're not, we hope you give us a try with this special offer. Get a Harry starter set with a five-blade razor, weighted handle, shave gel, and a travel cover. All for just three bucks, plus free shipping. 
Just go to harrys.com and enter 8989 at checkout. That's harrys.com, code 8989. Enjoy. All right, guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, thank you once again to everyone who's gone over to the YouTube page. There are full video episodes of this show that we're recording right now on the YouTube page, YouTube, Scarborough Country. Uh, and then there are all these episodes of Cheap Seats. They just put Putt-Putt up. The Dick and Evelyn Florn, the husband and wife Putt-Putt team. It is- Dick and Evelyn Florn. I love the Putt-Putt episodes so much. Get, Jerry Minor and- uh, Oh my God. The and bit, Carrie Kenny. Jerry Minor Stop, and Carrie it. Kenny from the state. From Reno 9101. Jerry Carrie Minor King. from everything. From SNL, from everything. But just go check it out. It is so much fun. Uh, go to, again, YouTube, Scarborough Country. Subscribe. We're trying to get as many subscribers as we can. And then just spend time. If you want to kill a bunch of hours, this is a great way to laugh and kind of lose yourself a little bit. We're all looking for those shows and things to do. There it is on our YouTube page. Watch it. Cheap seats. Enjoy. All right. Should we go to this Let's uh, do this story? next okay. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can always count on people in Florida to get pissed about the wrong things. Right. right? By the way, nice haircut. Thank you. Uh, home cut. A home home cut. cut. Home. I need a home cut. I need a home. My cut. hair is so fluffy. I know my hair is so fluffy. I need a home cut. Oh, I feel better now. People Look. are gonna get pissed. They're going to, but they're a lot of times the anger is going to be directed at the wrong thing. If you know, always, what I mean. always, they'll probably screw up what they should be pissed about. At least take right. this seventy-four-year-old angry man on April twentieth. Mm -hmm. angered that a group of golfers were, it says, was violating. It is a group that was. A group so I that think was. that's appropriate. That a group of golfers was violating rules on, but it doesn't sound right. I know it's right, but it doesn't sound right. right. Was violating rules on the course adjacent to his home. A 74-year-old Florida man allegedly threatened the players with a BB gun. Oh, come on. Prompting the septuagenarian's Jeez. arrest Friday evening on six felony charges six felony charges so he's probably mad that they were gathering and yeah they how should dare be sheltering you right in now place we're sheltering and we try to be a safe society there is no golf on a golf course golf is not an essential activity although i would argue that i love golf a lot i do too but it's not it's still not essential i still don't think you have to do it so this Put guy was probably that, mad right, right? About that, the right let's things. continue according to the cops john robert orr initially shouted at the golfers for driving their cart over a bridge and onto a putting green at the eighth hole of the conservatory course on the Palm Coast. The 199-yard par three hole features an island green and is touted as the, quote, signature hole of the Tom Watson design course. So, Did Tom Watson design courses as maybe. much as Jack Nicholson? No. Nicholas? Nicholas? Nicholson never Jack designed Nicholson? a course. Jack Nicholson never designed a course. Although... Going back to our YouTube page, you got to watch Super Dog Super Jazz because our buddy Dave Allen Gruber plays Guy, La Guy LaFleur. Dave who, Allen Gruber? No. Dave uh, Gruber. Dave, Dave Gruber, Gruber Allen. Allen. Dave Gruber Allen did a, uh, he played Guy LaFleur, who is a- Guy LaFleur. Guy, he played Guy LaFleur. Guy LaFleur. Guy LaFleur, spelled exactly like Guy LaFleur, but Guy LaFleur, mm -hmm. who was a dog- a super dog, super jocks, course, obstacle course designer. Yes. He said, my name is Guy LaFleur, meaning man of, of the, the floor. floor. Uh, so you're going to watch that. <laughs> so good. So you're not allowed to drive your cart over the bridge and onto the signature green because it's just the green over there. You're supposed to stop your thing, walk it over, putt, and then that's it. If you make it onto that green or, or you're going to damage the green. Fine. John Robert Orr is so right that we should be putting all of our effort into protecting the eighth hole of the conservatory course Look, in maybe these troubled times. Maybe there's federal money that he can use that the golf course can get to build a fence or put... All you need are two of those metal poles that are close enough that a cart can't fit through. That's it. Or lives in a home that backs up to the hole. The, so, all right. So now we know what this is. Really though the about. residence is separated from the course by a cement wall and water that surrounds the green. So I'm sure he gets a lot of balls in his yard. And then he gets a few golf balls, too. Help! One of the golfers told police that or yelled at them to leave the course and that uh, use of the golf cart in that manner was against regulations. Again, getting mad at the wrong thing. And How about why is this guy like? Too Get much off time on his time. Look, 74 years old, you're probably done with your the, you whatever your life You think these guys is. give a shit about the rules? Of, they don't even care. They're gathering they're golfing right now. in the end of April at the beginning of May. They don't care, care. about your cart on the green rules. They're playing golf today. They, and why do you care? Yeah. Why do you care? They don't care about their own lives as opposed to the eighth hole signature conservatory course green. Yeah. 
They're going to drive their carts up and down, They're right up to the up. flag. They're probably going to putt while sitting down in the cart. Gonna, it's going to drive by a game of like a golf cart polo. polo. That's what it is. Not even stand up. I guarantee you they're going to do that. Yeah. Or then allegedly went into his home okay. and grabbed a firearm and pointed it at the six golfers, each of whom said they were in fear of their lives. That had to be a good feeling, though, for Orr, because he's like, I tried. I was nice. They didn't listen. Now I'm, I'm going to point a gun I'm at kind him. of on his side here, except he's mad about the wrong thing. Firearm brandished by Orr, cops Jeez. charge, was a Winchester BB gun rifle. A Winchester BB gun? Is that a thing? I thought Winchester was a guy from MASH. Why does he have a BB gun? What is he, seven years old in 1952? I don't get it. Yeah, it is an odd thing. He wants to look tough. Yeah, but he doesn't want to actually do damage. He doesn't want to actually kill someone. Look, I'd rather it was a BB gun than a regular gun. Well, it could cause a very very lodge under the skin. It could cause cause a very very bad bad infection. infection. Shoots him in the butt. Vacation. The truth is that, like, there is no way that... I, no one has ever uh, had a mass shooting with a BB gun. So no. I'm okay with this guy owning this. Yeah, BB guns are all right. We're all right with that. In the video and photos taken by one of the golfers, or is reportedly seen holding the weapon in an upright shooting position toward the golfer. During the police questioning, though, or said that the golfers had drove their golf cart onto the bridge. And had they put, drove it on and there? And putting green, they did. You mean they had driven? Yes, they had drove it over Again, there. Again, course rules should be that no one should be playing golf right now. That's course rules, not don't drive it up on the thing, but no one should be playing. That solves all the problems we have here if you are not allowed to play golf right mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. Or said that after arguing with the golfers, he went inside to his home and unsuccessfully sought to contact the course's golf rangers. There is no way he called the ranger at that point. No. Probably the ranger was at home because you're not supposed to be working right now. Right. You're saying that the ranger wasn't at work. Right. Because no one should be at work No right one's now. at work. And then also, yeah, that wasn't your first option. I'm or sorry. Or then... Uh, said that I'm he- sorry. You know why I know that's not your first option because in the time it takes them to drive over the thing and get to the thing and putt, they'd be gone. They're gone. They're so, g- so you went in. You went in. You're lying. You're lying through your dumb 74 year old floor, f- Floridian teeth. teeth. Or said that through he the that, three teeth you have left. He said that he went inside with his got his air rifle and continued the verbal altercation. Mm-hmm. Asked if he had held the rifle in an upright shooting position or aimed down the sights towards anyone, or replied that he could not remember. Meaning yeah. that he totally did. Yes. That when means someone he says totally, I can't remember. That, that means, means you did. That's one hundred percent code for a yes. Yes, I did, I did that. He I also, don't, I don't recall. I can't remember. Our code for yes. This is what I'm going to say. To, to get myself out of incriminating myself, but 100% I remember and 100% I did He it. also could not recall his intentions when retrieving the rifle. You know. Yeah. Only, oh, I don't know what was Only that he mind. did not appreciate the way the golfers were shouting back at him and his wife. So now his wife's involved. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, don't throw I, I, I me protect under the my bus. wife here. Couldn't remember his intentions. By the way, this did not happen in the 1960s. Yeah. This, this isn't happened like, like this isn't a like, few remember days Remember that ago. guy you faced down at the Korean War? Yeah. No. We don't remember that. How many times do you pull a BB gun on golfers that this is a blur from yeah. all the other times that you used How to do that? How am I supposed to remember that? This is like three days How ago. How many times do people drive up on the eighth green? This is like five days ago. I can't be expected. Maybe he's got a memory issue. All right. Who knows? After Orr turned over the BB rifle to the uh, police, he was arrested on multiple counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Is that a deadly weapon? I don't think it is. Is it with the intent to kill and a felony that should be perpetrating a deadly weapon? But still, I, I kind of like a BB these. gun is not a deadly weapon. That can't be true that it's a deadly weapon. But still, I kind of like that they're giving it to him. It's like we're going to hold you up as an example. He was booked in the county jail uh, from from which he was released on Saturday afternoon upon posting bond. They should have made him fill out all of his paperwork with a tiny pencil with no eraser. Yes. Just to kind of stick it to him just right. a little bit. A little you know golf, I mean? a little golf a little reminder. A little golf reminder. And no glasses. Like an old man, 74 years old, has to read all the all forms. All the paperwork and fill it out on your own. Figure it out. No help. And if you do it wrong, you start over again, You go bro. back in jail. Go there back in go. jail and you start over on the You paperwork. start over on the thing. And you have to watch people drive up and down the course. Yeah. There, there it go. is. There you go. That's a show, you guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. We love bringing it to you day in and day out. Uh, tell your friends about this show. Uh, go punch a water faucet, then go wash your hands. Stay socially distanced, but stay connected. We got more musicians. Thank you to the musicians who have... Uh, Thank you to Langhorn Slim, who dropped a video a couple days ago. We're reaching out to other musicians to play to put Give some you guys some live music. Uh, it's something I definitely miss in this quarantine. 
getting to see our friends play music and getting to see live music. Mm -hmm. So we're going to bring that to you as well. Uh, we got great stuff coming this week. We're not stopping. We're not stopping. We're bringing it to you because we love you guys and we'll see you tomorrow. We're out. La -di -da. La -di -da -di -da -di -da. La -di -da -da -da. In my car. Star Avenue. A podcast. <clears throat> A podcast network.